G'day. In this week, I want to take you to the gold fields, the gold fields of Western Australia. I want to cover Coolgardie, Kalgoorlie, and maybe a couple of others. Believe me, there is still gold here. I just come from a pub where a couple of guys come in to fill up 20 litre cans of petrol, and they were complaining they only got three ounces today. Three ounces today? I'd be happy with three ounces in a month. Anywho, let's go. Here's some crazy statistics for you. Apple in 2015 recovered 1,000 kilograms in gold from their broken iPhones. That's worth over 50 million Australian dollars right now. And in one hour, the world pours more iron ore than it has ever poured gold in recorded history. I parked out the front of the Railway Museum, anticipating it should be open fairly soon. It turns out that it's now been taken over by a couple of enterprising guys, Travis and Drew, who not only are in rock bands, but also are into video production. I then went and filmed my version of uh, the uh, train in the station and learned later that they had made an incredible version of the train actually coming to life. Check this out. Over behind me is the massive super pit, Kalgoorlie, and it is massive. Um, very hard to describe, but <laughs> you kind of got to be here. Anyway, uh, the other day I was very lucky to be able to see a, an experience, a um, blast, which is pretty good. It was uh, apparently going to happen at 4.30, it did happen at 10 to 5, but it did happen. Just over there behind me, just as the explosion went off, and then so many seconds later you'd hear the, the bang. And then you see the uh, the rock fall down from the side of the cliff, and then all the smoke. The smoke was there for about 10 minutes, and they don't touch any of that rock for eight hours. And the reason they do that is because some of the mines that used to be here 
can still collapse and they don't want any uh, builders anywhere near it if it's going to collapse so they have to send in safety guys and do all the special tests they do this is the bucket for my PC 8000 it takes uh, four of these buckets to fill up one of the um, one of the loaders and that loader takes 70 tonne it's Right, it takes 70 ton of ore. Of, uh, the ore is then taken up to the processing plant. They'll process it and take the gold out of it and uh, turf the other. <laughs> That's about it. This bucket here costs $1.8 million just for the bucket itself. So it must be uh, pretty good. If you don't go to any tourist sites in Kalgoorlie, you must go to Hannon's Tourist Mine Site. Now, Patrick Paddy Hannon, in 1893, along with a couple of other dudes, found gold at Mount Charlotte, and it was that finding of that gold that created one of the biggest gold rushes in the Australian history. Check it out. I found myself out at a two-up school. I <laughs> know, oh, don't ask. The town is actually called a little suburb or whatever it's called. It's called two-up. And uh, you're allowed to do it here. It's, it's okay. They do it, I think, every Sunday. And they have a big meet here on um, Anzac Day because lots of places are doing it, I think. But, um, yeah, I'll try and, I'll try and explain the uh, rules. But basically, um, you have the spinner. And the spinner is, um, his responsibility is to get the kip, which is a little piece of wood, and you get your two pennies, you have your heads. And with the tails here, they put a big white mark so everyone can see the tails easily. Now it's, um, then he flips them. Now if it goes, flips up and doesn't spin properly in the air, there's another guy who can say no, null and void. There's another name for it. And no bets are allowed. But otherwise you are aiming to get either all heads or all tails. And people have bets around the ring and another group will have side bets with a guy. And I think mostly they're about $50 each so <laughs> won't be out of my league. Here's something that the uh, town should be very proud of. I'm in Boulder, and it's actually a real town, but it, all the facades right along here have all been recreated, and some of them, I guess, original, some of them just been uh, modified and fixed up. But it basically feels as though uh, 
we really step back in time. Obviously the difference is uh, you can see traffic, we can hear traffic flowing back and forth. I tell you if they, uh, if they laid topsoil across the, um, the main road here, I guarantee you've got a film set. You could have horses walking down here and drays and stagecoaches and everything and there really would be very little you need to do. So well done Boulder, looks great, feels great. How you doing? I can't remember the last time flies were so bad. So if you see me doing all this, I'm not signaling the aircraft to land or anything. I'm just trying to keep out of the road or the flies away from me. I'm in the middle of the gold fields. I'm between Kalgoorlie and uh, Leonora, but I'm aiming to get to a place called Gualia, which is a ghost town. So I'm quite excited about that. Yeah, love the bush. Spent the night here last night. <laughs> Anyway, that was great. And uh, yeah, just gonna hit the road now and go and check out that ghost town. Well, there you have it. Part one of a two-part series, Norseman to Kalgoorlie. Next week, we will do Kalgoorlie up to uh, Gualia, an old ghost town, amazing place. If you found it helpful and or useful or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. And until next time, this is Paul Bell Drive, signing off.